Hey, what's up everybody? This is Nightwing2303 from KicksOnCourt.com and today is part 14 of the Air Jordan project. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get right into it. As you can see here, we have a uh, full length herringbone. It's heel to four foot. Nothing too special. Um, this is just kind of how they used to put you know, herringbone on shoes all the time, which was a really great time in basketball footwear. Nowadays, they kind of mess around with storytelling and things like that. Um, this pattern in particular worked really great on clean floors. Um, on dirty floors it didn't work so well the grooves are kind of like rounded at the top um, where they kind of peek over and uh, like the Air Jordan 13 and Jordan 12 and 11 and stuff like that they were a little bit more uh, sharp so they kind of bit the floor a little bit better than this guy right here um, so what I ended up having to do is just consistently wipe the bottom of my soles at every dead ball or chance I had um, the weird part is that I actually took these out to the outdoor courts and they worked perfectly fine I had no slipping or anything like that so this would actually be a very suitable outdoor shoe um, and then for indoors just make sure that you wipe constantly in order to get that maximum grip the original Air Jordan 14 had a heel zoom unit similar to what you see here hopefully you can see it I know that the light might be bouncing off is pretty bright but it had a heel zoom unit like you would have in normal shoes and then in the forefoot you had an articulated zoom unit which is what you see here um, these are the midsoles for the Air Jordan 2012 now, the newer renditions just have heel zoom and they have forefoot zoom. It's not articulated, just one full on piece, just like most other shoes, hyperdunks and things like that. So, um, nothing too spectacular. One thing is that they're just a lot thinner than they used to be. I know that I mentioned this before in previous um, Air Jordan Project videos, but uh, it's, it's just a lot thinner. Um, it still kind of gives you that impact protection and things like that. You just don't feel the responsiveness. Um, the one good thing about this particular model is that you ride really, really, really low to the ground. Um, this whole shoe was kind of designed after a Ferrari and uh, just kind of takes that low to the ground kind of feel um, up a notch with, with that court feel. So court feel is definitely enhanced while cushion is a little bit more on the minimal side even though it is there. I do remember the originals and the first round retros which I still have. Um, those ones are just way more comfortable than these as far as a cushion uh, standpoint goes. So. Um, supposedly it does the same thing but you know from what you can actually feel these don't feel as good as they used to so the materials on these guys here pretty much a hit or miss um, I absolutely love the leather that they used around the shoe um, but I dislike this like new buck stuff that they used here um, back here in the collar and lining area doesn't really bother me at all um, but right here I just didn't like it it starts to peel away from the uh, the sole I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but it started to peel away and all that stuff, which is kind of a bummer. I'm used to these things peeling off. That's that's something that's always happened with, with Jordan 14s. Like I remember people just ripping them off because they used to just flap around um, after so many wears. So um, wears in an actual game, not just casually. So, um, but yeah, that's pretty much as you know how it goes with the materials. I don't think that they're like great, but they're not horrible either. Definitely could be worse. Um, the ones that I have that are before this one, uh, the same colorway, the 2004-2005 version, the, the materials on those are just much, much nicer. Um, so the, the, the bad part about that is that they're kind of old, so they're not really like the best thing to be playing in because you never know when they might fall apart. But um, yeah, so that's pretty much how it is with the materials. It's not anything spectacular by any means, but it's definitely efficient. Um, the one thing is that the 14s are kind of notorious for being one of those non-durable models. Um, like I was saying earlier, these teeth things kind of get chewed up and they fall apart. Um, they'll flap off and things like that or fall off um, just because it's just, uh, you know, everything is just foam laid on top of material. So when people start stepping on your feet and things like that, it'll start to tug away at those little teeth there. So durability is kind of like one of those hit or miss things um, overall though I think that it's uh, a pretty good thing to play in um, again I can't give it like too high of a score or anything like that just because it's kind of on the cheap side but it still works for what it is which is nice and one of the good points is that it has very little break in time uh, maybe it took a couple of hours before everything was perfectly uh, broken in as, as far as what I've experienced as far as the fit is concerned, um, these actually fit me just fine in a size 9, so I'd say that these are true to size. As far as the actual fit and lockdown goes, uh, once the break-in time is completed, you will have to readjust your laces a little bit, um, because as you can see, when they're all laced up here, it's very, very close together, so once that leather starts to stretch a little bit, uh, you want to 
kind of retain that close feeling and fit that this shoe will offer you. So you just kind of relace, tighten them up one more time, double knot it, and you're ready to go. As far as lockdown is concerned, the midfoot lockdown is pretty solid. It's not perfect, but it's definitely good. Um, the heel and ankle lockdown is not perfect by any means. If, if anything, it kind of like has like a, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, one of the weird things is that it has this asymmetrical collar, which isn't horrible, but it's definitely a lot lower than something like the Air Jordan 13. And the one thing that uh, this shoe will actually kind of give you is a um, greater appreciation, I'll say, for the newer designs. So like the newer designs typically have, like LeBron's, for example, and Hyperdunks and stuff like that, they have a really high up uh, collar right here towards the tongue, and then they dip way down in the back of the heel. If you wear one of these guys, you'll totally appreciate that because this back right here comes up past your heel and your Achilles, and it just kind of like just jams right into the back of your, your Achilles area. It's pretty uncomfortable. Not painful, just uncomfortable. It's something where like you, you notice it and um, you kind of wish that it was not there. So when you have something that is more contoured around the actual shape of your ankle, it's just a lot more uh, stable and, and comfortable feeling in my opinion. So um, wearing something like this, while I do really do enjoy uh, playing in these guys right here, um, you definitely have a greater appreciation for that newer style that they have that is actually a little bit more anatomically correct. Ventilation isn't too great on these guys. Um, basically it's kinda you can see it, it's just those perforated edges or perforated panels on the leather and then some perforations on the tongue. It doesn't really allow too much airflow. It allows a little bit of heat to escape but not anything to really make it noteworthy. Um, one of the coolest features that I thought this shoe had when I was a kid was actually this little vent system right here. Again, these are made after a Ferrari, and I remember when I got these in, um, it was the black toes with the white upper, and I was like, man, these things got an air scoop. These are crazy, and I just thought it was one of the coolest things ever. It does absolutely nothing, so it's like one of those things where it's like, like back in, back at that time, like it was so awesome to have it, but now, now that you're older, you realize just how useless it was. Um, but it definitely was cool. It's a cool feature even still, just looking back at it for nostalgic purposes, that it's one of those shoes that has an air vent. You know, you can't really say that about a lot of sneakers. So the overall support comes from that fit. Again, the lockdown is not perfect. It's, in some areas, it's a little bit sloppy, especially in the, around the back and the heel area. Um, and then the rest of the support is coming from this midfoot uh, shank. This is not carbon fiber. It is plastic. It's just a TPU. And um, this is just basic arch support and torsional support. So allows for some rigidity and uh, all that kind of stuff so that you're not overextending anything. Um, that part of the shoe works perfectly fine, so no complaints there. Um, again, with the support from the fit, uh, it's a little bit sloppy in some areas, most notably from here back. Uh, once you readjust the laces, it's perfectly fine on this side, but um, back here, it, it's just not perfect by any means, especially with that heel area. So um, just keep that in mind, and uh, you'll be good to go. Just a brief recap. The traction is decent, it's not perfect, it's not horrible. Definitely will be a better shoe outdoors in my opinion from my experience. I, I enjoyed these a little bit more outside than I did inside surprisingly. Um, however, if you do play with these inside, just make sure that you're consistent with your wipes. Overall score for these is an 8.5. The cushion definitely isn't what it used to be. Um, it isn't even close to what it used to be back in the 2004-2005 retro range. Um, so with that, I give these also a 8.5. The materials aren't perfect, um, but they're not horrible. The thing that I really just can't get over is just this uh, kind of nubucky, like suede synthetic. I just I don't like it. I like the suede from my older pair a lot better. Um, so the overall score for materials is an eight. The leather I thought was fine. Um, it's just this this stuff is just cheap. The overall fit is an eight and a half. Like I was saying before, once you readjust those laces after the short break in time, um, you'll pretty much be good to go from the collar down. Um, it's basically that heel and uh, this, this piece right here that kind of bugs me. Um, it doesn't provide the greatest heel lockdown and it just kind of gets annoying the more that that kind of like bashes into your, your heel. This doesn't break in too easily as well because it's uh, got this big rubber pieces uh, right here. So um, just, just kind of take note of that, um, but other than that, uh, that's pretty much what it was. Overall ventilation gets a 2. I know that that might be kind of like overdoing it a little bit, but there are perforations throughout which gives it at least a 1. And then there's an air vent here. I mean, there's a freaking air vent. You gotta give them at least one point for that. Overall support was a 7.5. Um, pretty much kind of what I would say is like an average support rating. 
Um, it's not horrible and it's not the best support ever. Um, not anything like, say, like a LeBron 10 or something like that where it's just got you completely caged in the shoe no matter what. Um, so this shoe gets a 7.5. Very good base. Um, this, the platform is very stable. You're low to the ground, so again, increased stability. It's mostly the heel area that has not the best lockdown. So if you're moving a little bit quickly and things like that and you go to stop, your, your foot will move a little bit too much inside the shoe, um, especially on your rebounds and things like that. So once you tally all that up, the overall score comes out to 7.16. I'm just going to round that down to a solid, solid, solid 7. And um, that's pretty much it. It's a average performer. It's not, it's not bad. It's not good. Um, I wouldn't say good. It's just not great. And uh, for the money, um, especially with aftermarket prices, this might not be something that you'd want to kind of like invest in. Um, however, me personally, I do perform... In, in my opinion, I perform much more comfortably in stuff like this. Um, I do have really good games and things like that in the newer stuff. However, when I wear things like this, I just have that real big kind of nostalgic factor. And um, one also, one key point to point out is that these actually do perform really, really greatly outdoors. It's, it's kind of weird. Um, so, one of the key things with a 90s style shoe is that outdoor usage is definitely a bonus. Um, a lot of shoes nowadays are kind of like lean and light and things like that. They kind of cater towards indoor playing. Um, this kind of shoe it is going to be built for either or. So uh, at least you'll know that you're ac actually getting your money's worth if you do decide to transition it to an indoor and outdoor game. Um, other than that, I think that these were really, really fun to play in. Still one of my favorite Georges to hoop in personally. Um, definitely love everything from the 11, 12, 13, and 14. And then as far as like the older models, I really love playing in the 8. Um, those are my favorites so far out of the series. Next up is going to be the Air Jordan 15. That'll be an experience. I haven't played in a pair of 15 since I was about freaking, like, man, I think I was like 18 or 19 years old. So it's been a while, and um, that's over 10 years, and uh, I'm getting old. All right, guys, so that pretty much takes care of it. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for all your support. If you want more information, as always, you can go to my site, kicksoncourt.com. So until then, have a good one.